Greetings from the Catholic Parish of Bundaberg, trusting you are well and in good spirits. Today we continue with our getting to know the people of our parish just that little bit better. A bit of fun and a bit of information. And today we are introducing Jana Mackey. Jana works at the Atrium of the Good Shepherd and I believe it's the 25th anniversary in Australia. So, Jana, can you just tell us a little bit of your story first? So, um, I was born in the Czech Republic. Um, I came to Australia as an immigrant when I was nine with my family and I've been to lots of different parishes around the world and in Australia as well, so probably about 15 different parishes all up. Um, but Bundaberg's been the longest time I've been anywhere. So, I've really um, gotten to know people and it's just been great. Yeah. Beautiful. So, Jana, we're asking you now to read one of your favourite Gospels. So if you'd like to do that for us now, please. Sure. So the one I chose for now, I have lots of favourites, but this is one that's been sort of speaking to me for the last couple of years. It's from Matthew 18, um, chapter 1 to 5. Sorry, chapter 18, um, 1 to 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such a child in my name receives me. It is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. That, that Children just teach you so much about life. Now, can you tell us the reason why you have chosen that gospel? Well, um, actually, I had to laugh when I saw Anne doing the same, similar <laughs> one because um, I guess the spirit works in wonderful ways and, um, and also uh, the girls, uh, Liz and Maddie, were doing The Lost Sheep. And that's another one that I was thinking about choosing. <laughs> so, um, but this particular one um, has been really close to my heart because of, I guess, what I do uh, with the children in the parish. Um, and when I read it the first time, I really, really listened to it. Um, I realised what those words meant, and it, it was, it was like, in a way, it was a little bit heavy for me because I thought. Uh, unless I'm like a child, I'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. And that was sort of like, well, what does that mean? I, I <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> um, and so then I started thinking about what, what are children really like? And what is, what is Jesus saying to us in that, in that gospel? Um, to be, not to be childish, but to be childlike. Mm. And so... Um, the more I've watched children, and especially in the atrium, um, the, the more I realise that children are so close to God that um, we need to be like them to trust him so fully and to be in his presence, not, not worry about all those other things that might have happened or are going to happen, or, because we really don't, don't know what's going to happen, and especially at a time like this, just to be so trusting and... Um, and it's hard for me, I guess, so that's a bit of a challenge for me, that one. Yeah. yeah. Now, the Atrium of the Good Shepherd is a really interesting concept, and I would say it's one of the best kept secrets going around the place. <laughs> yeah. I really do, I really mean that. And I'm not yeah. sure people actually, even some people might even know where it actually is, mm -hmm. right next to the Holy Rosary Church here. Yeah. So can you just give us a little bit of background of where it comes from? Sure, mm -hmm. so the catechesis um, was developed by a few ladies um, in Italy about 50 to 60 years ago and it's based on Montessori uh, so the method of, of the catechesis is uh, children do hands-on things to get to know Jesus and one of the ladies that began this work was Sophia Cavalletti and she was a scripture scholar and she really didn't have anything to do with children um, because she wasn't married herself and so she taught at the university in Rome um, and one day someone asked her if she would, um, you know, just open up the scriptures with some of the children that were um, preparing for their sacraments. And she didn't want to do it. 
And so she said, oh, no, I think, uh, you know, someone else might be better for this job. Um, and <laughs> I think sometimes we all feel a little bit like that. But the parents kept pursuing that, you know, that she would, she would get her children, the children ready. Mm -hmm. And so she finally said yes. And then she realised that when she opened up the scripture to read with the children, um, they responded. They sat so quietly and just were so interested in, in even just listening to the scripture out loud. Um, and word for word, scripture not paraphrased, not, you know not like a children's Bible. They were actually interested in what the Word of God said. Mm. And so from there, she, um, she met a few other ladies. One of them was Gianna Gobby. And Gianna was a um, Montessori teacher. And so they, when they got together, um, they developed this way of teaching children the catechesis, all about the church, mm. everything to do with the church. And it's such a deep and I guess a quiet work um, it's not, it hasn't been proclaimed all over the world as in we're here, we're doing this. It's, it's sort of one of those, you know, sort of a, a quiet, slow work. So, yeah. Um, and in Australia, it's been for 25 years since we've had the catechesis. Um, and in Bundaberg, we've had it for five years. Well, I saw you yes last year when you were working with the sacramental children. Now, yeah. these children are usually young, aren't they? So they go from about three to twelve or something. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, but this was a sacramental grade, so that would have made them about eight years of age, somewhere around there. Mm. And you were doing the lost sheep, <laughs> and I was just amazed because you had these children on the floor, and you're just using really simple objects mm. like a little thing of a shepherd or a sheep or yeah. a pen or the gate or something. Yeah. And the children were just engrossed. And what really struck me was, on this occasion, there were parents as well behind <laughs> them in a circle, a larger circle. Yeah. And they were engrossed just as much as the children. I, I didn't think no, that would get big yeah. of their interest, but they were yeah. certainly integrated in it all. It was quite stunningly beautiful. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us um, perhaps how you became involved? Um, so I've always had this you know, real passion for, for teaching um, children the, you know, the catechesis um, and just about the church, because I've got four children of my own who are sort of grown up now. Yeah. Um, but I, I saw a need um, for children to, to actually learn their faith yeah. uh, in a deeper sort of way. Um, I think, you know, when I came to Australia, we went to Catholic schools as children, um, but I sort of felt like there was something missing a little bit because uh, not only was I learning English but I was also learning about my faith because the country I came from we didn't have any books available for children or any it just wasn't allowed um, mm. because the government didn't allow religion so it just became really close to my heart that you know children need to have this opportunity and then even you know teenagers um, there's a bit of a gap there of 
you know, teenagers having the availability to, to sort of learn about the faith. Um, and so I, I just got really passionate about how could, how could we do this? And then um, I was really blessed because Anne asked me if I wanted to go on this little trip to Brisbane and I had no idea what that was about. And at the time I couldn't go. And so a few other ladies went from the parish and then they came back and gave us a bit of a report. And when I saw the photos and I saw what that was, I just, I just thought I, I've got to get myself some of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so when the opportunity actually came for a few of us from the parish to go to Brisbane and do the formation course, um, I jumped straight on it because I thought this is something that you know speaks to me because it's all hands-on things and it's making things and drawing things and painting things and mm. I I just really love that kind of stuff so yeah so I, I I haven't turned back since I started doing that because I see even just for my own formation it's been such a blessing and I've learnt I've learnt so much I've learnt the most I could ever learn you know um, about the church and about liturgy and mass and just the scriptures it's just amazing so you have to learn a lot when to teach don't you it's yeah but the, what's yeah. beautiful about this work too is that we don't um sort of teach children as such it's a funny way of doing things i guess from the original you know you teach children by just imparting your knowledge onto them but mm. it's not like that it's um we proclaim the scripture and then the children use those materials that are there to meditate on what we've just talked about and it's hands-on and they can move the different figurines and the in the different settings that, that the parables might have been told or, and it's amazing to see um, the Holy Spirit work you know through the children and I've learned I think more about yeah like I said about my faith than I have ever before just by watching children yeah you know and because um, they, they are so close to God they are you know we, we often don't give children that that sort of, um, I guess, what's the word? Just the the benefit of the doubt that they actually know they know this stuff. You know, we look at them and think they're just vessels to be filled with knowledge that we should impart on them. But it's children know so much more about God than we do. Yes, we can become forgetters, can't we? Yeah. We really can. The busyness yeah, of life. Yeah, that's it. Right. And the stresses of you know yeah. all the other things. Um, so, do you have anyone assisting you? I do. I have um, my good friend Marie Smrek. Um, yeah. There were five of us to start with, um, but at the moment there's two of us. So, would you like more? Look, um, I really, really would. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is, with the catechesis, is um, I guess it's a huge commitment, and I've seen that in my own life. That it's something that um, you can't just sort of do a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, it becomes your life. It's kind of like the life <laughs> in the church, yeah. you know. Um, so that's that's what I found for me. That's what it's been. Um, but obviously, you know, um, the the people that come and help us, they don't they don't need to go into the depth of it all, and you know. So it's mainly just the, the people who are interested in being catechists. It, it changes your life, like, and and it's a little bit scary at times because you think, where is this thing taking me? You know. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah. It's a beautiful ministry. It really, really is. Yeah. So it'd be good probably to have some more children there, maybe. For sure. So um, would you like to do a little promotion to the parents who would, uh, might be thinking about bringing their children along? Do you know, I would. Um, and the best way to do that is actually physically going to see what the space is. Um, it's very difficult for me to sit here and, and describe it to you because... When you walk in that door, you actually get a feeling. You, you you can see it for yourself and you know whether, you know, like it's very interesting. Um, and I guess we've had families come through who, you know, they've looked at the things and they've sort of gone, oh yeah, and, and then sort of walked out again. But most people that walk into that space, they can see something that they've never seen before. Uh, and it's very difficult to describe. Mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful presence. In the times that I've been there, you can really feel the spirit working. You really can, and you haven't got all the high tech IT stuff, have you? <laughs> it's very basic. Yeah, you see the young ones and and the delight on their faces. I think it's the hearts. simplicity of it, Father. Like yeah. just the you know that you don't have to overthink things. You know. So if someone was interested in presenting their children, 
how would they contact you? So just ring the parish and um, Raquel or Jeffrey will uh, give you yeah, my contact and um, you can come and walk through and we sort of recommend um, that the children come in apart from the sessions every week that we normally hold, um, they come in another time so that I can spend time and we can spend time looking at the space together and, um, and then to see if that's something that um, the parents would like to do with their children. Um, it's a commitment for once a week um, and we do like two hours in, you know, for a day. At what times would they be? Um, we're changing that at the moment. Obviously, we can't hold it yeah. right now. But yeah. uh, it's been on a Monday from after school, so 20 past 3 to 20 past 5. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, so our phone number is, and it'll be on the screen, 41516666. So if you'd like to have your children presented, uh, come along and catch up with Yana. Yeah. So what else do you think parents can do to help their children? So at the moment it's, it's pretty hard because um, I guess everyone's sort of stuck at home a little bit and um, it's, it's it, it, you know, stresses will rise with children not probably having enough to do or, you know, not being able to go and do their normal things and parents are at home more often and, yeah, it's sort of that, I guess in a way it's a blessing because we get that closeness but then to be able to expend that energy somewhere um, yeah. is might be a little bit hard, especially for parents with small children. Um, so something that uh, we encourage parents to do is to have like a prayer table at home. Maybe just choose a tiny little corner somewhere in your house. And it can be for everybody. It doesn't just have to be for the children. I guess that's our cue as, as adults to get down and, you know, and yeah. actually be like children. Yeah. Um, so what we do in the atrium is we have a prayer table and people can do that at home and I'm sure a lot of families already probably have that. Um, but just something very simple like a cloth on the table and a candle and the scriptures is very important and even just if the children want to gather like a vase of flowers and put on there. And what, what we recommend um, is the quiet time. So the atrium is a very quiet space and the children get to meditate on certain things that they've heard or read about Jesus. And it's just a beautiful time that they can sit and just think about things. And often our prayer table consists of like a word or a, a drawing that the children do. Something that just spoke to them about something we read or something they heard. And then they can just sit there and think about that for a little while. It doesn't have to be a long time, but just that each day, that little time that um, we spend with Jesus is, uh, is really precious. So. so if you'd like to see how all of this works and maybe get a little a model, I, I'm sure um, Jan is a great exemplar of this. It's just a model of, of teaching your children prayer. In fact, teach really by experience, mm. because as you say, it's not the old jug mug thing, it's an experience <laughs> yeah. of prayer and, and the presence of God. So thank you, Yana. Thank you, Father. So Yana, we might finish now with a couple little prayers. If you'd like to lead us in prayer, first of all. Compassionate and loving Father, in the face of confusion and concern, impart to us the calm of your presence. In you, allow us to find hope and healing. Be with those who serve the sick and give them your caring hands. Be with those who lead and give them your spirit of wisdom. Be with those who have fallen ill and give them your comforting heart. Wrap your, hearts, wrap, wrap your arms around our world and hold us in your love. Allow us at this time of trial to then serve as instruments of that love to all we meet. We ask this in your name. Amen. So may that Lord be with us all, and may Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being with us today. Uh, join us again next week in another episode of Church Chat. Keep in touch, stay well, and be gentle with each other. Amen. Mm -hmm.